Are you familiar with the concept of coins for the military? Oh, challenge coins. Yeah, challenge coins. Yeah. You're familiar with the concept of those? I never went to the bars, so I never challenged or got challenged. No, but... They're commemorative. They're commemorative, and sometimes people will get them for different things. Like, someone in our unit got one for helping get a Humvee repaired faster. Did you ever use them for any purpose? Because there are some Marines who would get a challenge coin and go, Oh boy! And the boot would go into a bar and see another Marine slap down his challenge coin. I challenge you! And the other Marine would say, No. Get out of here, boot. Stop being stupid. Yeah, only like super motivated people in the army do that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. It's, Private, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> here's a new challenge. Get out of my face. Yeah, here's your challenge. Go away. <laughs> Drink this jug of antifreeze. <laughs> Eat these Tide Pods! <laughs> I only got two coins the entire time I was in the military. One, I got from being in a... Ra- Everybody in our unit got them. Mm-hmm. It was just the 10th Mountain Division coin. The other one I got, I'm very pleased with myself for. At Fort Polk, there is a unit that is the 509th Airborne Division. And 509th Airborne Division is known because they are Op 4, which is opposing force. They are the bad guys in Fort Polk. The badass guys? No, they're the bad guys. They pretend to be the enemy at Fort Polk. Oh, they pretend. So if you go to Fort Polk and you're in the Joint Readiness Training Center, JRTC, in the middle of the woods, shooting at a bunch of guys wearing weird olive green uniforms, that is 509th Infantry Battalion. They're airborne qualified. They live and breathe to just piss off the rest (laughs) of the military. And I absolutely love them. (laughs) Um, they make your life difficult. Why do you like that? Because they made life difficult for everybody else, <laughs> not me. Yeah. Most of the time, the rifles, that the, the M4s or M16s that they have, they rarely actually shoot live ammo through them. Most of the time, they just fire blanks through them. Hmm. Because that's most of what they're doing, is just pissing off the rest of the army. <laughs> and making battalion commanders rip out their hair and go, Oh, those bastards! <laughs> because they could just be absolutely in. Infuriating. They have whole trench and tunnel systems dug all over the place in JRTC that they'll just <laughs> pop up out of nowhere. I was at work one day and one of the guys from 509th came in. Apparently they did not have a battalion armor for 509th. And he's like, I have got 500 M4s that I need to get gauged. They, they have not done weapon gauging on them in a long time. And we actually have a range that we're supposed to be going to coming up. And I need these to get gauged. Yeah. I was like, I, okay, it'll be a pain in the ass, but I mean, I can do it. Sure. So he he brought all of his M16, he brought like three or four shopping carts. I don't know where he got shopping carts from. <laughs> brought like three or four shopping carts down that were just filled with M4s. Some of them were kind of dirty, but it was, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It didn't take me that long to gauge an M4. So you knocked them out pretty quickly. So yeah, I knocked it out pretty quickly. It took me like a couple hours, but I got them all done, wrote them all up on paperwork. And like a weapon gauging was done at this point. Such and such ones were found out of spec. Replaced the parts that were found out of spec, yada, yada, yada. Thanks, you helped me out so much. I, it's, this is great. I needed to get this done, and I didn't have any way to do it. I really appreciate it. I was, yeah, no problem, man, whatever. So I helped him out, and it's like, I could have told him to pound sand, and it wouldn't have mattered. He's not affiliated with my unit. He's not affiliated with a unit that I'm supporting in any way. You didn't have to help him, but no. y- you felt an obligation because you're a, you're a human being. Well, and he asked nicely. Oh, there you go. He was like, thanks, man. Next time you're out at JRTC, we'll make sure that you don't, uh, we'll try not to shoot at you. <laughs> and I said, I said, oh, no, don't do that. You got to shoot at me so that I can go to the Burger King that's right down the road from the medical station. <laughs> so next day I'm at work. The lieutenant colonel for 509th Infantry Battalion came down to my shop and gave me the 509th Infantry coin. Nice! As a way of thanking me on behalf of the 509th Inf- Infantry Battalion, I present you with this coin. He gave me the coin, and so I, then I jokingly told people that I got the 509th Infantry coin for aiding and abetting the enemy. <laughs> I got a coin from 509th, something that very, very few people outside of 509th are going to get one of those coins for. Mm-hmm. I was very pleased with that one. It's surprising how... Certain ribbons hold different levels of value to the soldier. Well, or wasn't, it, wasn't it Napoleon Bonaparte said men will fight and die for a little piece of colored ribbon? You and I both got the National Defense ribbon. We don't care. You pretty much get that yeah. for signing up. You get it for graduating basic training. You got your Iraq service medal, which I guess holds a little bit more value. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. It shows that I was in Iraq. I got a good behavior ribbon, so I, I spent 
three or four years without getting into a drunken brawl or punching my commanding officer. Yep. The, I think the award that means the most to me is the Expert Marksman Award that I received mm. in boot camp. Mm-hmm. Because I was in basic training for three months in California. And it only rained one day while I was there. On Rifle Qualification Day. Ah, perfect. So I'm trying to aim at this target 500 yards down the range while I'm being pelted in the face by this ice-cold rain. And I hit expert marksmen. I hit my shots that day. The thing that stood out to me was that the range officer handed me an expert marksmanship medal that he had on him. I didn't have to buy mine like everybody else. He just randomly gave it to me for doing That's this. really cool. Yeah. It's one of my... I don't have very many fond memories of boot camp, <laughs> but that one stands out to me. While I was in basic training, we came back from one of the ranges, I, one of the longer ones. Spent four days out in the field. We'd done a bunch of shooting with our M16s, stuff like that. I sat down on the floor, and I took my M16 apart, and I start cleaning it. And I was like, it's got to be clean. I went... went. I'm going to have to turn it in eventually, so I'm going to clean it, because I just fired a bunch of rounds through it and a bunch of blanks through it. You were preemptively cleaning it because you knew you'd have to turn it in. Also, we had come back. The drill sergeant had said, okay, well, get your stuff cleaned up, get your stuff taken care of, get laundry ready to go out, do whatever. Do stuff. Be productive. So I'm sitting on the floor cleaning my M16. I suddenly realized that I couldn't hear anything. And I looked up, and I realized that it wasn't because my hearing had gone away. It was because everybody had fallen asleep. (laughs) And I'm kind of struggling to stay awake, but it's like I'm busying myself with cleaning my M16, and also, it's a burst fire gun, so of course I'm excited about any time I get to do anything (laughs) with it. I had never handled an AR-15 before I went into the military, Mm. or an M16, so I was just excited any time I got to do anything with this gun. Your excitement for having an assault weapon in your hands was fighting your exhaustion. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just diligently cleaning this thing, and I realized everybody's asleep. Right as I realized this, I look up, and one of the drill sergeants walks into the bay. And the moment a drill sergeant walks into the bay, the first person to see them is supposed to jump up, stand at parade rest, and yell, at ease. And then everybody has to jump and stand on the, on the line. I'm about to jump up, and he looks at me and points, and it says really <laughs> quietly, Don't you say another fucking word. <laughs> Yeah. And I immediately shit my pants <laughs> because I am terrified now. <laughs> and I just nod. He gives me the thumbs up, writes down my name on a piece of paper, and for a second I'm like, I'm going to be in so much trouble. <laughs> he goes around, he writes down the names of like six or seven other people that are still awake, cleaning their guns or doing something. Does the same thing to every single one of them. I basically got a... <laughs> Out. That was like all I could do was make a small squeak. Because I did that, nobody else had heard anything. So every single other person does like the exact same thing. You just hear six or seven <laughs> just from like different places inside the bay. He walks out and I just keep cleaning my rifle. I just won't say anything. I know I'm being a blue falcon right now, but I, I, I don't want to get yelled at by this drill sergeant. It's too late. He's already seen they're all asleep. Five minutes later, the drill sergeant comes in. I look at him, and he looks at me, and he goes, get the fuck up. (laughs) So I jump up and yell, at ease! (laughs) Immediately, everybody else jumps up. They're bonking their heads on the bunks and, like, falling over, and everybody just, like, staggers in the front. And he just goes, Hazard, Jenkins, lists off this list, like, we're the ones that are in trouble. And he goes, you guys stay here. Everybody else, get the fuck outside and get in the pit. (laughs) Oh, no. Not the pit. They're going to make you do exercise. Push-ups, front back goes, rolling left, right in this pit. I'm just sitting in the barracks room, like, holding the bolt in the sling for my M16 and looking out the window, just going, I'm sorry. (laughs) I wish it didn't have to be this way. This is the way it is now. (laughs) 